G'day, it's Oscar here from Drones for Hire. Today we're going to run through a bit of mapping. We're going to, this is going to be the first video in a three part series about mapping, processing and then application with the spray drones. Before we get into the mapping, we're just going to run quickly through the RTK and give a really basic overview. So your RTK is basically the ability to correct for an error in the GPS system. So how it works is this is running on the same GPS system as your remote and your drone. When it gets a signal from the GPS system saying that it's moved, it says, no, I haven't moved. I know for a fact I'm stationary. Therefore, it turns that movement into correction error and it sends that correction error to your mapping drone, which is then recorded with your photo to, cre to create a more accurate photo. So do you need RTK for mapping? Basically, yes. There's not a whole lot of point mapping without RTK because when we're mapping, we're going for really accurate um, readings and without RTK, we don't have that accuracy. We're going to move across now to the M3M to do some mapping in the remote. You can use any RTK enabled drone to do the mapping. A P4 RTK has been an absolute workhorse and a fantastic drone for a long time. The M3E series are superior. Um, you get more hectares done, better photos, more accurate, but any um, RTK enabled drone will do. One of the first things you want to do before you send your drone off to do mapping, and one of the most important things to get right at this stage, is your ground reference point or calibration point. So we've created uh, an X here on the ground that we'll be able to see in the photos, and we put a post in the ground here so we can find it when we come back with the uh, spray drone in a couple of days or weeks. What this point does for us is it allows us to calibrate our map so that our relative map that we create with the drone then becomes ground referenced. Extremely important, you won't be able to follow through on a fruit tree mission unless you get this right and you need to get it right before you map. The easiest way to do it is to have this ground reference point at your takeoff and landing point at the start of the day. Once you set this and you've got your RTK up and running, then you can move the drone and land and fill wherever you like. So you can move up through your spray process, but you need this right at the start of the day to get that point locked in so that your relative map is ground referenced. We're using the M3M today to do this map. We're going into flight routes, create a route, and then mapping. Simply create your polygon around your area you want to map. We've got a nice square area here. Make sure you include your landing and takeoff point, your calibration point we talked about earlier. Now name your map and whatever you name the map will be on the file when you go to use the photos in the processing. You're going to select your camera, your M3M. We're just going to do RGB today. Going to want terrain follow on. Going to go real time terrain follow. And we're going to bring it down to about 70 meters for this job. 80 meters is pretty good. Anywhere below that, you're starting to get a higher resolution. Makes it easier for plan ID. We put our flight speed up fairly high today. And you want elevation optimization clicked on there. This just gives you a bit better um, readings on your elevations. So your Z axis becomes more accurate when it comes down to your actual spray mission. Very handy if you're working with a gully, which we've got in the middle of this paddock. Creates a little bit more of an accurate 3D model. Okay, once you've got all your 
settings that you're happy with, you're going to click on the play button. It's going to go through a pre-fight checklist. We're just going to check our return to home height. All good. Click next. Upload file. And start. That's the basics on how we do our mapping. The first step in a, a three-step workflow for getting these terror emissions into your, your spray drain. This is probably the easiest step of the three. Um, the, the processing is probably the hardest, but the beauty of breaking it into three parts like this, as opposed to doing it all on the T40 remote, is that you can break up that workflow. So, you can come out when it's a bit windy like it is today where we couldn't spray but we can safely map then we can take the processing back to the computer at home or on the laptop in field but it can be a windy day it can be a wet day you can do it at night so you can break up that workflow so that when you get out in the field when you've got your good spraying day you're out there and you're getting hectares done which makes it a lot more efficient the t40 and its ability to map and then process and then spray is fantastic for small areas and fantastic when you've just got the one job and you don't really need to be smashing out those hectares when you can, when you've got the conditions to do it. So again, first step, check out the other two videos for the next two steps in the process. Um, remember that at Drones for Hire, we've got a team of farmers, contractors and drone experts. So if you run into trouble, you can always contact us. Part of what we do with our sales is we have a setup day where we can come out, we can do some mapping, we can show you this process and how it relates to your operations. Thanks for watching.